It's never your job to dim your own light because it makes other people feel uncomfortable when you shine. It's your job to shine, to bring that light to the world. That's what you were put here for. You need to stop self-deprecating right now. Right now. Put it to rest. I know it's funny. I know it helps you fit in or blend into a situation. But no, stop doing that. Stop telling these witty little jokes about yourself that really put yourself down in the dirt. All right? Let's talk about it. So self-deprecation, we all know what it is, right? Pretty much interjecting some type of self-humor or, or self-critique to help ourselves better fit into any type of social or professional environment. Help us blend in, help us be unassuming, help us to seem more modest and more humble, right? I get it. We all do it, right? Tell little jokes about yourself. You eight mile yourself, quote unquote. How much is too much though? Like how much of that is too much? Because a lot of people, when they tell these little jokes, yeah, it's humorous, but deep down, there's something deeper and darker going on. Somewhere in their psyches, they actually believe these things. You know, we see a lot of comedians, right? They make careers out of talking about themselves and what they do wrong, how they messed up, and where they've been led astray, or whatever the case may be, right? We see it all the time, and we love it because it makes these people seem more relatable. But there's actually been studies done that higher class people, higher status people, when they self-deprecate, when they tell these jokes about themselves, you know, the Kevin Hart's and whoever you want to name, right? When they tell these jokes about themselves, higher status people tend to look more attractive when they do so. It brings them down to earth in a sense, right? They seem more appealing, more human, more relatable. That's why they can do that and get away with it and it's all cool. When you're lower class or lower status or maybe somebody who hasn't ascended to their level of whatever success looks like to them yet, whatever circle you're in, if you're not there yet, self-deprecation is going to put you in a a kind of shaky position because people are going to start to believe the things you say about yourself whether you think so or not here's a couple places where all that self-deprecation stuff is just terrible right at work i know y'all want to seem relatable to your co-workers and you don't want to come off as cocky but i would rather you be cocky and confident than put yourself down every chance you get especially around the people who hold the keys in their hand to help you get higher and further in whatever you're trying to do why do you continue to put yourself down? What do you get from that? Somebody says, good job on the presentation. What's wrong with saying thank you? You put the work in, right? You work hard for it. Is something wrong with being proud of what you can do, of your abilities? Why is it such a crime to be bold and confident about what we are able to accomplish and do? Why can't we be proud of being great? We should be. You know why you don't feel comfortable being proud of your greatness? or potential greatness because the people around you are average they're small-minded and they get offended when they see somebody else proud of who they are and what they can do people hate Floyd Mayweather I'm not talking about person I'm talking about in the boxing ring we talking about somebody that's 50 and oh never lost shot the LeVar Ball never lost undefeated beat Pacquiao beat Shane Moore Beat De La Hoya. Beat this person. Beat that person. And y'all hate it because he tells you how great he is. And he backs it up. Back in the day, Ali, they hated it. How can you tell me what you're going to do, Mike Ty? How can you tell me how great you are? We should annoy y'all. Same reason why y'all hate, a lot of y'all hate LeBron right now. LeBron said, yo, 2016 made me the greatest basketball player ever. And y'all got so mad at somebody that got 17 years in this thing and been great from day one. These people are small-minded. So if, if, you're, if, if you've been raised and conditioned in a way that you're uncomfortable with being proud of your greatness, you're just around small-minded people. That's why you're so prone to self-deprecation. Even if it's a joke, if you joke about, I can't spell, you joke about, oh, I'm not good at this, you joke about whatever. You don't think the people, your boss and all, you don't think they watching your coworkers? Even if it's subconscious, our, our subconscious minds can't really tell the difference. We just hear it and it's like, oh, well, shoot, she always joking about how she can't do no presentation. I'm like, I ain't about to go to her. Think about it. If you got a person that, even if they're not the best, right, they step up to the plate. Yo, I'll do it. I'll work on it. What's up? Let me try. You got that person or you got somebody that's super talented but is always downplaying it. 
Oh nah, it's okay. I, I guess I didn't. I just threw something together. I didn't. I'm going to the dude that says what's up. Let's do it. Cause I know he he's confident with his. He gonna make it happen. This person's always gonna put it down. I don't want to deal with that. Similar thing in relationships. Now I don't date seriously. Y'all know me. I don't. And <laughs> one thing about me is that I'm my biggest fan. I'm my biggest fan. I love myself. I think I'm the shit. I think I'm amazing, yo. I really do. I look in the mirror. I'm like, damn, yo. God really did his thing with you. Every day I think I say that to myself and I believe it wholeheartedly. You know why? Because I believe I came from the most high. So I was supposed to be great. What you want me to do? I ain't about to apologize to make y'all feel more comfortable. Nah, I'm great. Period. When you're in relationships, yo, if you don't see who you are, who you are, you don't see that king or that queen, how can your partner ever see that? Truly. If every time something happens, oh man, I'm so this, I'm so that, I'm so this, I'm just out of shape, I'm just, who wants to be with that? To be with Eeyore, that's pretty, I like some Eeyores. Always miserable, always this, always that, always putting, why can't you just be proud for once? Why can't you be confident and forthcoming and bold for once? You don't think that affects you? All that negative self-talk, let's talk about when you're by yourself, right? Something I had to stop doing, even though it be, you know, innocent jokes, and I still do it from time to time, but I'm able to control it to a point where I'm fully confident with myself. So it's not gonna affect me. But in situations, say you lost your keys. Oh, I'm so dumb. I always forget things. Oh, I'm so this. I just can't remember this. Um, I, I always lose things. Why? You sound like a little kid. That stuff affects you. You start to believe it. It comes in a lot of situations where people tend to be, to allow themselves to be defined by their circumstances. So, yeah, okay, if I lost my keys one day, or a couple times, shoot, five times. I don't know. I don't care. It don't matter. I might have lost my keys five times. That don't mean I have to define myself by some being somebody who loses keys. You get what I'm saying? Even if my reality says, yo, you don't lost your keys too many times, right? I get it. Cool. But for me to put myself down for that versus addressing a problem and just moving forward accordingly, stop trying to be so modest. Because modesty is being able to acknowledge flaws and and shortcomings and, and struggles and critiques, being able to acknowledge that and still maintain a level of healthy confidence because you understand that it's balanced out or even way outweighed by all the greatness about you, all the good things. So yeah, I got these little whatever. Who cares, bro? Look at my strengths. I could work on these. Look what I really do though. Like in a job interview, y'all, that's why y'all struggle with resumes and CVs and all that. Y'all so uncomfortable talking about yourselves. Y'all are so uncomfortable talking about yourselves in a in an uplifting manner. It's crazy. That's why you get in an interview and then you 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 want to pinpoint what's going wrong in the, in the, on the resume already. You want to look at the they get the resume. Oh yeah, don't worry about that. I was just you know I was figuring life out. I was. They don't want to hear that. Stop bringing problems. Bring solutions. What can you do for me? We gonna look at the weaknesses anyway. Truth be told, they don't even mean nothing. If all of this greatness outweighs them, I ain't about to bring up my weaknesses. I'm not about to be in a job and if you bring up everything I did wrong. If they ask about it, I'll address it like a man. Yeah, this is what was going on. This, how I, this is how I handled it. That's how the conversation should go. This is what was going on. This is how I handled it. Not, oh yeah, all these things went wrong. Oh my God, I'm so lucky. No, stop being so freaking, trying to be so freaking modest because y'all take it way too far to the point where you put yourself completely down. It's not appealing, it's not healthy, it's, it's just not good for anybody, period. So a couple studies that look at this stuff, they're talking about how a lot of people who self-deprecate the most, even sometimes to the point where it's it's not even a conscious thought of theirs, it just kind of happens. They don't even notice they're doing it because it's such a habit, right? A lot of people who self-deprecate on such a grand scale, they have low self-esteem and they don't always know it. But a lot of times they do. And what, what happens is the way it works is, OK, if if I'm in any type of situation, say I'm in a social situation and whatever, and any chance I get, I'm, I'm going to put myself down to either make myself more liked by people, make myself more pleasing or more appeasing or whatever, make my, myself less assuming and more able to blend in and fit in and acquiesce to whatever the vibe is. When those jokes come in, 
what it's signaling to other people, I'm going to preemptively lower expectations about myself through these little jokes and little jabs at myself. I'm going to lower expectations so that when I do inherently mess up or do something wrong, people aren't going to be as upset about it or people aren't going to be as surprised because, oh, I, you know, I told y'all I wasn't good with presentations. So if a whole slide is wrong and the date is wrong, I mean, hey, it's just little old me, right? They're going to start to look at you as whatever mistakes you made versus who you actually are and what you bring to the table. Friendship, relationship, job, it don't matter, bro. We got to stop this, you because low self-esteem is a serious issue. And if you find yourself continually, continuously self-deprecating, putting yourself down, even just to, if you find yourself having a habit of just making yourself the butt of the joke to make things less awkward, I don't know. I don't know why y'all do that. I don't. If you find yourself doing that often, you need to look in the mirror and find out what's going on deep down because it's not healthy, yo. And we really got to be careful in this social media age, TikTok, IG, Twitter, and all that because there's a trend going on. And it's, it's always been a thing on the internet, but it's a trend going on where people will look at pictures or videos of their old selves and talk about, oh, I was so ugly. I was so this. I was so that. And yeah, it's funny. Whatever, we all laugh and, and all of that, but it's it's really a problem when you look at it and when you think about it, and, you know, you think deeper about it because I think this generation is overly sensitive, easily triggered generation. We never want to come across as too cocky or too brash or too confident or too sure of ourselves, right? Me, I don't give a damn. I love myself, okay? And I, I my, my job, my, my goal is always to help other people love themselves the way I do. Because we all came from that greatest power. That's another, that's a side note, whatever, but this generation, right, people tend to demonize and resent and hate and slander their old selves and compare it to their new selves and then label it, mislabel it as growth. That's not growth if you just hate your old self. I don't look at that as true growth. I look at true growth as being able to acknowledge your old self and being understanding that at that point in time, you were the best you could be. Everything going on around you, you were doing the best job that you could be to just be yourself and give whatever you could give to the world. I don't care what it looks like compared to now. That's how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to change. But to just completely demonize, when I look at my younger self, yo, I look at a dude that made a lot of mistakes, right? He was misguided, he was lost in a lot of ways, but at the core, I stood on the same values. I always saw myself becoming who I am today. And me right now, I'm nowhere near who I see myself as. But I understand that when I was 10 years old, when I was 15 years old, I'm thinking, dang, what, what would I be like at 20, 26, 25? I'm that now, and I can appreciate that journey. I don't look at myself from 2005 and demonize that. 2010 and demonize that because at that given time I did the best I could with the circumstances I had. They dealt me a crazy hand and I played my cards like a general and I'm still playing them. Stop demonizing your old self because it carries over to now. If you stop looking at your old self, I was so ugly. No, you weren't. You were 13. What are you talking about? We all wore graphic tees and little bunny rabbit shoes and all that. Light up. Come on. What are you talking about? You gonna call a 13 year old child ugly? Cause yo, when I went to therapy, you know, one thing they told me was that version, the, the way, the kind of thoughts I was having at the time and how low I was and how negatively I thought and felt about myself at that time. She told me to look at a picture of myself when I was a baby or five years old. The therapist told me. So I did put it as my phone background, right? And she was like, if you saw this kid right now, knowing everything you know, making it through what you made it through, what would you tell this kid right now? And I said it's the most amazing thing. I said, you know, I would tell him, never give up. Believe in yourself, love yourself. Always get back when you get a chance, you know? Be an example, lead by example, don't follow the crowd. Stay confident, keep working hard. Cherish your family and loved ones. You're amazing, you can do anything you wanna do. She told me to tell that to my five-year-old self. And just like that, my perspective came back. That five-year-old little boy in me still needs that love. Same way the 26-year-old me still needs that love from myself. You need that love from yourself. I know it seems like an innocent joke. I know it does, but it's not. It's not. You need to love yourself. They're not gonna tell you that. You need to love yourself and be proud of your greatness and what you bring to the world. There's nothing wrong with that.
You think it's a problem? Yo, Floyd Mayweather, let's go back to Floyd. He worked every day of his life to be the best boxer of all time. Whether you think he reached that or not is up for debate. I don't care what you think. It's not about that. You mean to tell me something I've worked every day for? I done stayed up late. I done woke up early. I sacrificed this. Parties, relationships, fun, friends, all that. I sacrificed all of that to reach this mountaintop. You gonna tell me I gotta tell little jokes to pull myself down and knock myself down a rung so you can feel more comfortable? That's not the world we live in. All right, fortune favors the bold, right? Not the timid. The thing about this modesty that everybody wants to embrace, it's false. It's all a facade. It's just you're, you're putting up just as much of an act as the guy that's over the top confident and arrogant. The guy that has to run off his accolades and run off how amazing he is at every chance he gets because otherwise he feels insecure. All right, there's a balance to be had there. But all of this completely, oh, I hate myself. I'm, I'm such a dumb blonde. I'm so this. I'm so lazy. Oh my God, I lose everything. We need to stop that. Let's put that to rest, yo. Let's put that to rest. And if that, if it makes you feel uncomfortable putting that stuff to rest, I'm serious. Go to therapy. Go so, seek out some type of help. It's going to benefit you, man. I'm telling you, when you can even just replace half of those negative sentences, negative self, half of those negative self-speak moments, right? Replace half of those with empowering statements. And watch how the trajectory of your whole life and your days will change. Watch how more powerful you feel. Watch how much more energy you have. Watch how much more confident you become. How much happier, how much lighter and the weight's off your shoulders. Watch how that stuff changes when you just, even just half of the negative self-talk moments. Replace them with positive self-talk moments. So instead of saying, oh, I lose things all the time. How about we talk about, man, I'm, I'm so patient. Even when I lose stuff, you know, I keep it going. I always find it eventually. How about that? Man, you did a great job on the presentation. Man, thank you so much. I worked really hard on it. How about that? I like the sound of that. You're going to run the risk of people saying you're too cocky. It happens. Big whoop de doo Big whoop de doo who, who wrote the rule book that says you shouldn't be proud of yourself and love yourself more than anything else? Who wrote that rule book? Because I never read it. And if it exists, I'm never opening those pages. It's never your job to dim your own light. Because it makes other people feel uncomfortable when you shine. It's your job to shine. To bring that light to the world. That's what you were put here for. That's simple. Stop the self-deprecation. Let's boss up and let's keep it moving, man. And love and be proud of ourselves for everything that we are bringing to this world, which is greatness. That's simple, man. Let's get it.